In this video, I want to talk a little bit about our group project, and I also want to talk about how to avoid that guy. More on that in just one moment. First, I want to go uh, give you a little overview of the learning module that we have here. The first video is the one I'm recording now, which is What About That Guy?, which is why you don't see it just yet. After that, everything in this learning module is going to talk about the design document that we need for our group project, and it's going to be very focused on getting our group project off to a good start. So first, con uh, configuring GitHub and GitIgnore, that's something we're definitely going to need for a group project, and we're really going to see the value of GitHub and GitIgnore this semester as we're working through this. Next, a little bit on Scrum, kind of just an overview of what Scrum is. Then we're going to take a look at how to put together our design document for a group project, which is one of our first deliverables for the group project. Then we see how to elaborate on our Scrum board by adding tasks. And this is part of a sprint planning, which I'll encourage the groups to do this week. Have a little sprint planning meeting and decide what you're going to do for the group project. Now, if you are doing the design document, when your group is doing the design document, I have some videos that I've pulled in from a couple of other classes, so they're not required. Uh, in other words, I won't quiz over them, but if you're doing the design document, you might find these are good for additional information. Maybe you're like, hey, wait a minute, how do I do a storyboard? Or how do I do a UML diagram? Or can you tell me a little bit about behavior-driven design? So I've added some optional videos here towards the bottom. Optional just because I didn't record them for this class, but they're still very relevant. If you take the word Android out mentally, the entire video still applies. But nonetheless, I did make them optional because uh, they're just additional reading. The core are above this for additional reading line. And this, we, uh, if you just look at these core videos, it's a little lighter than most weeks. I generally shoot for about an hour and a half to two hours of video per week. So the core videos will come in just over an hour and then the optional videos as much as you want to watch. Okay, nonetheless, I do want to talk a little bit about our assignment. Whoops, sorry, just one second. I do want to talk a little bit about our assignment, which is under the Assignments tab, and it's this Group Project, Final Project, and then Enterprise Application Development Group Project. So that's what we're going to take a look at, and then after we walk through the, uh, after we walk through the assignment, I'll talk about how to avoid that guy. So if we look at the assignment, uh, first of all, we need to have three different group members and the group members should sign up on the discussion board for a group. So either post an idea up there and solicit other members, or if you don't have an idea, look at other ideas that have been posted and say you want to be part of this group. So uh, our project is a scrum project with three sprints, three sprints that are going to be about four weeks each. Uh, I'd like you to come up with your own idea for a project. It just has to meet the requirements that I list out below. So a lot of times people tell me, hey, if I do a social media app, will that be okay? Well, provided that it meets the requirements in this grade sheet, yeah, that's fine. Uh, really, that's all I'm looking for. I don't care what kind of business logic you have or what your app is, provided that it just meets these requirements. Okay. Um, to facilitate group work, create interfaces first, then create stubs. Now by interface here, I don't mean a user interface. I mean an interface like a data type. Remember polymorphism. Variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. Object type will tell us what will happen when we call those methods. So a variable type only needs to be a list of methods. And an interface is a list of methods. Because we're heavy in spring on this group project, that's very important because we can declare the variable as an interface type and then let spring fill in the object type as it deems appropriate. But now what's a stub? Well, if I told you to work on this group project right now, you might not know a whole lot about persistence and you might say, well, gosh, I'm in charge of persistence. I can't do anything until we cover that in class. Then the UI person says, well, what can I work on? And then you say, well, nothing, because I can't do my part yet. That's a scenario that we want to avoid. And so we'll avoid that by coming up with an interface and then a stub that implements that interface, where a stub is just a hard-coded implementation. It pretends like it's saving something to a data store, but it's not really. But it's good enough for Spring to marry that stub into a variable, and then the user interface person can continue working against this hard-coded data set while the persistence person simultaneously is working on persistence. So important to note, 
the, the project does not have one big deadline at the end of the semester. Really, you should be doing weekly commits to the version control system GitHub. And uh, if you're not, then that's going to be an early sign that there's an issue in the project and that there's a dependency that is not going to be delivered. So we need to take a careful eye on that. So I am anticipating weekly commits and definitely commits by the end of Sprint. Because by the end of Sprint, we're going to do a code review. And for that, we're going to need to have some committed work. Okay, each team should have three team members. One should focus on the UI. That includes things like button clicks as well as look and feel. One person should focus on business logic and persistence. And then the third person kind of wears multiple hats, which is Scrum Master and Product Owner and GitHub Admin. I used to have these roles cut up a little bit differently, and I didn't have a dedicated Scrum Master, Product Owner, and GitHub Admin, but it became very obvious that having that as a separate role would really help the project because that really is a role all of its own. It's actually three roles put together. So Sprint 1 is the planning sprint. Form your groups by going out to the discussion board on Blackboard and either post an idea or sign up on somebody else's idea. Then, okay, then the next deadline we're going to have is the design document. So I have several videos in this learning module that tell us how to create the design document, how to do the scrum board, and how to do the source code repository. Now, when Sprint 1, Sprint 1 starts, we want to work with a little bit of user interface, but we also want to start writing our behavior-driven design unit tests based on our requirements. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. I do discuss that a little bit more in the design doc video. But essentially, we come up with requirements in the format, as a user, I want a certain feature so I can do something. And then we'll elaborate that requirement into a series of examples using given when then syntax. Then we can use those given when then syntax to create a series of unit tests. So unit tests, user interface, that's part of Sprint 1. Also, create the interface, create the stubs. That's part of Sprint 1. So I'll let you read this in a bit more detail, but the interface and the stubs, that's all part of our Sprint 1. Now Sprint 2, we've already written the stubs in the interface. Now we start writing the actual implementation of those interfaces in a separate class. So the stub is the hard-coded result, but uh, the actual implementation is when we're actually going against some kind of data storage mechanism. And that's what we're going to look at in Sprint 2. Sprint 3, we're looking at integrating everything together into one cohesive application, and then we share it to our class uh, via a series of videos. So basically, I'll ask each group to come up with a video that uh, de demonstrates the application. So after Sprint 1, we're going to have some code reviews. After Sprint 2, we're going to have code reviews. And then after Sprint 3, we're going to have the big demo. At the end of the semester, I'll ask you to submit this grade sheet. All students should complete this all members section. Then the UI specialist and only the UI specialist should fill out this as well and then submit that sheet. The business logic and persistence specialist should fill out this part and the common part and submit that separately. The product owner scrum master GitHub administrator should fill out this part and the common part and submit that separately. So each group member should submit a grade document. On each grade document, I should see the all members section, and then I should see one of the three that follows. You're only grading yourself here, uh, not grading your group members, but don't worry, we will have a peer review survey at the end of the semester where you can grade your group members. So speaking of grading your group members, the question that we have here is how to avoid that guy. Now, who is that guy? Well, whenever I start this class and it's live, I ask for a show of hands on who has ever had a group project at UC that has gone phenomenally well. And generally about one out of every 10 people will raise hands. Then I'll ask who had a group project that did not go so well. And generally almost everybody will raise hands and I'll ask why. And oftentimes it comes down to that guy, uh, the person who missed commitments, who missed deadlines and messed up the entire project. So here's a question, how do we avoid that guy? Well, the first thing is, who is that guy? The person who's overcommitted, misses deadlines, and holds up a project. But the real question is, who really is that guy in the real world? When I was an undergrad at Miami University, we did a lot of group projects. And we kind of had this, 
we had this vision of the world that was very uh, grand and perfect that everybody's always working towards the same goals and the like. And we said, well, it's the university doesn't really replicate that because you have a bunch of free writers who just join a project and want the grade that everybody else earns. And you know, it wouldn't really be like that in the real world. Is it really like that in the real world? Well, indeed it is. And people tend to get overcommitted and people have different priorities. And it's not that they're trying to slow down the project. It's just they have other things to do. And we have to consider who that guy could be. That guy might be your boss. Are you going to fire your boss? Probably not. That guy might be your customer. Are you going to fire your customer? Probably not. So sometimes you can't control who that guy is, but knowing who he or she is is more important just so you can try to mitigate and work around that. So how are we going to do that this semester? Well, uh, Oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to start with some clearly defined roles, and you see that in our group project. You see that we have three very clearly defined roles. Now, the scrum with the daily stand-ups, we don't want to go on and on in technical detail. In the daily stand-up, everybody should just say what I've been working on since the last stand-up, what I'm going to work on until the next stand-up, and anything that's blocking me. Now, if there's more to discuss, you can have a 16th minute and say, okay, after stand-up, Let's get together and let's maybe swarm together and try and figure out your blocker. That's perfectly fine. But in your stand-up, you really should keep to those key principles. And also, it's important to stand. This is going to sound funny, but even if you're doing it remotely, it's important to stand. Uh, when I do stand-ups, a lot of times if someone is joining on a phone, you can tell that person rambles a lot longer. And then you can say, hey, are you standing? And chances are that person is not standing. Standing up helps to keep things nice and concise. Uh, it keeps us from rambling. Hey, maybe I should start recording my videos when I'm standing and they'll be a little bit shorter, but hey, who knows? So scrum with daily standups. Now daily might not be practical in a class that is online, but I will ask you to plan about two per week. Uh, choose them at hours when everybody can meet. And if you have the person who's overcommitted and says, I can't meet at this time, I can't meet at that time, pick a time like 7.30 a.m. on a Saturday. Nobody's doing anything then. Or pick some odd time like that, maybe even 10 o'clock on a Thursday. One of those times where you know everybody's home and everybody's awake. Don't feel that you have to pick 3 o'clock on Tuesday all the time. Pick a time that works for everybody. Now, how else are we going to manage that guy? Version control software. So we're going to use GitHub for distributed version control. And we can use, we will use UC's implementation. It's important to use UC's implementation because we are going to be doing code reviews. And everybody in this class has an account on UC's GitHub. And it's a very predictable account name. It's your Bearcat ID or your 6 plus 2 in other words. So let's plan on using that. Uh, what we want to avoid is the person who says, I'm not done yet. I'm not ready to commit. Oftentimes that's hiding something. Oftentimes that's hiding work that has not even been started. So with version control software, your code should always compile when you save it. In other words, you shouldn't leave for the day with something that doesn't compile. And you should keep very frequent commits in the version control system so that we can kind of look at the progress and we can tell if we need to maybe give you some help if you're falling a bit behind or maybe give a bit of encouragement. But if you don't see a commit from one of your group members for over a month, that group member is probably that guy. And it's probably now time to start making alternative plans. Now, another thing that we'll use are interfaces, stubs, and implementations to work in parallel. For this, I'll bring up a class diagram that I'm going to show in a later video, one I've done in Argo UML. When you're in an introductory Java programming class, the concept of an interface does not make any sense, but hopefully we'll make a bit more sense out of it this semester. An interface is just a list of methods. Any class can implement an interface, and any class can implement as many interfaces as it wants. It's not like inheritance where you can only subclass one class. With an interface, you can implement as many interfaces as you want. And what's really important is if you are a class and you implement an interface, we can make an object out of you and we can store it in a variable of that interface type. This becomes really, really crucial in Spring because in Spring, all we need to do is declare an interface, uh, a variable rather, using this interface as the type. And then either this stub or this implementation can be the object that is stored in that variable. Now, why two different classes? Well, this stub is just a hard-coded stub that turns, returns some predictable results. It acts like it's persisting, but it's not. It's just plain Java. 
This class over here is an actual implementation class that's actually going against a real data store. Now, we need a whole lot more information to make this class than to make the stub. So we make the stub first, and that buys us time to build the actual implementation class without holding up any upstream dependencies that we might have. And we can see that this event DAO stub could go all the way up to the UI layer. So it's important to keep these layers working together. So that's the beauty of Spring and also the beauty of polymorphism. Variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call. Object type tells you what's going to happen. Are you going to hit a hard-coded, uh, basically a hard-coded class, or are you going to actually hit implementation details? So interfaces probably didn't make sense in intro Java, but now we see that we can use interfaces to help us manage one of the most difficult parts of our project, and it is that guy. So Scrum, Scrum Board, Version Control, GitHub, these are all things that we're leveraging this semester to see how we can run a group project well. I look forward to working through this with you, and also I look forward to the code reviews that we'll have uh, at the end of each sprint. One thing I always say in a class like this is that technology changes very quickly. I don't know everything. You know more than I do. And in this class, you'll learn more from the person sitting to your left and your right, in theory, that being your fellow students, than you will from the person in front of you, that being me, the professor. My job is just to make sure that this learning happens. So with our group project, with our GitHub, with our card reviews, I'm confident that it will. I look forward to seeing with, uh, what you come up with. Thank you.